together in our gathering hymn. This is the Spirit's entry now. It's number 448 in your hymnal. And as you are able, you may rise for this.
We'll now pray together our prayer of the day for this baptism of our Lord Sunday. Let us pray. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and we'll hear our Bible readings.
people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but the one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated for our hymn of the day. Christ went for us, you were baptized. And that's number 304 in your hymn list. Transfiguration on a mountaintop. All of these 
theophanies, as they're called. Theophanies, meaning divine manifestations in, with, and through Jesus, combined together in the season of Epiphany each year to give us a glimpse, a mere glimpse of God's eternal glory and wondrous truth. An essential part of this divine glory and truth and grace that Jesus manifested to the world is the simple good news that God loves us. God loves us. It's the simple but mind-blowing good news that Almighty God is truly an engaged and loving parent to us all. It's the simple but mind-boggling good news that God Almighty, the creator of the universe, actually cares about us. Actually cares about each and every one of us and involves himself with us in our lives. And this amazing good news that Jesus himself proclaimed and revealed and manifested is a good news that was also affirmed and confirmed by him by his death and resurrection. Through Christ Jesus, through the whole package, his conception, his birth, his life, teaching, suffering, death, resurrection, and ascension, through him, we know that the good news that God cares for us and loves us is indeed trustworthy and true news. And through Christ, we know that our sins are forgiven by God's grace through faith and that we have a heavenly future through Him for all who believe. In the Old Testament of the Bible, it says in various places, God's steadfast love endures forever. I see some of you nodding your heads. That's very familiar from the Old Testament. God's steadfast love endures forever. And in Isaiah 43 today, God declares, I have called you by name. I have called you by name. You are mine. And so, our Lord Jesus came into our world to affirm and confirm this. To affirm and confirm these ancient biblical declarations for all who believe. It's one thing to proclaim God's love and grace. But Jesus fulfilled the promise of these biblical declarations by dying for us on a cross and rising on the third day. Brothers and sisters, God loves us with an everlasting love. And this good news is certified and sealed by the blood of Jesus. And we really need to hear this over and over we really need to hear this gospel message and share this gospel message now more than ever, especially for young people these days. You know, the young adult years are when we discover and shape our basic self-concept and worldview. And young adults today are forming their basic worldview and self-concept while being powerfully influenced by highly edited virtual worlds, by a highly edited world of social media. And we need to recognize this additional struggle for young people these days, a struggle that many of us did not have to deal with at that age. In the vast world of social media, in the vast landscape that exists, young adults are trying to navigate the questions of life while being inundated, flooded daily by a highly curated and distorted virtual world that's transmitted to them from the moment they wake up in the morning to the time they go to bed at night. But the heart of the gospel, the heart of the gospel of Jesus Christ is the saving grace of our true identity as children of God. So we all need to hear it over and over within the noise of social media and the virtual worlds that surround us. 
And through our baptism, brothers and sisters, God lays claim to us. And it's a covenantal claim upon us. Holy baptism is a public declaration that Almighty God has chosen us and claimed us. Our holy baptism into Christ Jesus and His church is an outward physical sign of God's inward spiritual involvement and covenant with each and every one of us as His beloved dear children. Baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord God declares through the words and actions of the baptizing minister, You are my beloved child in whom I take delight. And just as we delight in our own children, so also God truly delights in us. But God does so with a heavenly love, a transcendent love that surpasses any earthly understanding of love that we might have. For as the great evangelist Billy Graham often said, even if you were the only person on this planet Earth, Christ would have died for you. In Jesus' name. Comfort all who are in need, 
especially Jan Wentz, Brandon, Shannon, Chris, Sacred, Elsie, John, Bruce, Brenda, Lorna, Alex, Eulale, and Audrey, Secret, Chad, Kenny, Carl, Carrie, Sandy, Ruth, Lori, Chuck, Lynette, Sam, Jane, Dwayne, Ellen, Gary, the family and friends of Anita Stoker, Quentin and Lynn, Margaret, Robert, all of our men and women in military service and law enforcement, our governing authorities and veterans, all our fellow congregation community who are not able to join us in worship, and all of our family members and friends who are on our hearts. God of grace, hear our We are joined to Christ and to one another in baptism. Bless those who are newly baptized and those who are preparing for baptism. Help us to be faithful in fellowship, worship, evangelism, service, and peacemaking. God of grace, hear our you created each of your saints for your glory. We give thanks for those who have called by name into your eternal embrace. Comfort us in grief, grief and release us from fear. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. As you are able, you may rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
welcome to sing our communion hymns as we receive communion.
give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our ascending hymn is Baptized in Water, number 456 in your hymn. <laughs> Thank you. 